Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode eight. Congratulations on getting here. Uh, we are finally going to start getting into making a bullet uh, and a gun. So we're gonna be able to move our player around and shoot some bullets. Uh, and then eventually we'll make some enemies and stuff like that. So the point of this next batch of episodes is to go into a few things regarding uh, controlling other nodes from your script, as well as instancing those nodes. And that's how we'll be doing that with bullets. So what we're gonna do today is focus on controlling other nodes from the same script. So right now we're controlling the, the script we are attached to, right? Uh, and by nature, our, our sprite. But we also want to add now a gun that we're going to control and have it point where we want it to point. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how we grab that and then actually get that to work. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is add a sprite node uh, as a child of this, just by clicking this and uh, I hit Command A, but you can just click the plus button, of course. Then we'll go over here and I'm gonna go ahead and name this gun. And then I'm just gonna stick the icon PNG in here. And then I'm going to change the visibility, modulate, and I'm gonna put, if you put all the RGBs down to uh, zero, you get an all black image, which is handy for stuff like this. And I'm gonna go into the transform here of the property uh, and uh, I mean of the uh, node 2D. And I'm gonna set this to 0.3. And you can see now it's more of like a, a bar shape, if you will. And then finally, we're gonna do something called uh, changing the offset. Now, uh, the rest of the stuff is like, you know, you could definitely figure that out. You know what scale means, right? Uh, and you can just explore these. But offset is pretty interesting because it what it does is it changes the offset of the sprite and wherever the offset is, is where the position actually is. So if I do this and I set the offset to 28, uh, or here, 24 I think is what I liked, right? Uh, you can see that now uh, that is now the uh, zero, zero position, right? And you can also see that if we rotate it, it's gonna rotate around that pivot offset, which is really why we're doing this, because we're gonna have this be, this gun is going to point like that, kind of like we're a tank, all right? Uh, but anyway, that's not really the point of the lesson. Uh, those are just you know me messing with stuff to get something to look remotely like a gun, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and actually grab that gun. So there's a few ways to do that. In the ready function, you, you're gonna call a function called get node, okay? And then you can see that it actually already pops these things up for you right here. Uh, we want gun. So you can see that the argument, this is actually a function that takes as an argument a string, which is the name uh, of, of this. So be careful because if you change the name of this, then this will no longer work. And that's something to be aware of. Um, also note that we are calling this an array function because this is a function that actually has to do something, right? What it does is it's essentially going to get like ourself, then it looks through all the children and it says, does anyone have this name gun? And then it returns to us uh, a value that is basically a kind of re reference to that node, uh, right? So if I, for instance, print this, so I print whatever this is getting, so this should return to us a node, right? If we print this in the ready function, you can see this pops out down here at the bottom, it says sprite uh, colon 1203. So essentially what that is, is that's kind of like the, the identifier of that. So in the game, we no longer have to go through the process of getting our node, then getting all the children, and then searching all the through all the children, and then finding the one that matches up. We have the the ID here, 1203, uh, and the sprite type, and so we just we can just grab things and change that by that thing. Now this is actually not in, in incredibly important to understand, but I just think it's, it's cool to know that that's really how this is working. We've got an ID, and so we've got kind of a reference or chain link to where that node is uh, at any given time. Now, uh, you will almost never see people actually use the get node function, but if you if you do, uh, the shorthand for it is to put a dollar sign and then you simply type in the name like that. So this is the exact same thing as doing the get node here, right? And again, the reason, or I guess not again, but the reason you have to call this in the ready function, um, or at least as ready, we'll get into that in a second, is because that this is uh, actually getting the children here, and thus you can only call this once the game has actually started, because you don't add these children technically until the game has started, then you add all the stuff. So anyway, if you don't understand, just take my word for it. Um, children in Godot are added from the bottom up. So we add gun, then main character, then self. Um, so if that makes it more or less confusing, um, you know, that, that's just how that works, okay? So what we wanna do is then store this, store this in a variable, right? So that way we don't have to, again, call this function every single time we wanna access the gun variable. For instance, if we put it in physics process, we'd be calling that function to run uh, every single physics frame, which is just unnecessary because we can store that in a variable, right? So I'm gonna say var gun, and I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm not going to say that it equals anything. This is basically an undefined variable. Uh, and is the same as saying equals null. And I actually don't <clears throat> think we've gone over null 
in the series yet, but null is basically an object that says this is nothing, um, <laughs> specifically. So it's, 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 a specific, it's a thing whose job is literally to tell you that, you know, I am nothing, um, which is interesting. You're like, how do you use that? Well, if you use if statements, right, you check if something's true. Uh, if you use an if statement on any kind of object, right, if we say if gun, right, uh, and then we'll say print hi, and this is just to go over this, right, what, what we're doing here. Uh, you can see that it won't print, but if I say uh, gun equals um, hi, right, and then I do it, you can see that it prints hi. Because as long as this equals something other than null or false, right, uh, it is going to evaluate to true. Because essentially, if you're, if you're asking about an object, you're saying, is there an object here? Does this thing exist? That's what you're saying with if. Um, but anyway, short digression. Then all we do here is say gun equals gun. Gun equals that. Okay, uh, and then now we have access to the gun, and you know we can just we can print gun. You can see it'll uh, give us the uh, reference number to that spread again, which is what we've just stored in this variable. Now, uh, I'll go into how we use that in a second, but I also want to say that uh, this is actually how it used to be done in Godot, and I really just did that to explain to you. So you might think, well, why can't I just do this, right? Gun, okay, uh, and you'll be prompted with a fun little error that says use on ready var um, get node. Now again, this is a shorthand for get nodes. We're okay there, but what's an on ready var? Well, um, the way I just showed you is the way it used to be done in Godot, but uh, it's much easier to use something called an on ready var. And I just did that so that way I could basically teach you very quickly um, what an on ready variable is. Now you already know what it is because we that's we just essentially did it. It's it's a, a variable that is undefined until we actually run our game, and then it's essentially like doing what we did. It's essentially that uh, we're going to assign this variable once the game is ready, i.e. once we have entered the scene tree. Um, so yeah, anyway, that, that's how you'd use that. And I typically organize my on ready variables by putting them in between my constants and my variables, just like this. Uh, and I do believe that is actually the correct way to do it. Okay. Now, I don't know how we're doing on time here, but I'd like to finish up with actually getting our um, uh, gun to go ahead and aim at our mouse. Right now, of course, nothing's happening. Um, now, I am going to do one thing really quickly here, which is to put this all in its own separate function. So we're going to say function uh, movement. Okay, this is going to be the function that handles all the movement. Here is all the code we need for movement, right? So I'm just going to grab it all, command x, and then I'm going to paste it right there. And now we've got this function movement. Uh, now, I don't want to go too much into making our own functions for right now, but again, remember that this is a function that we uh, define, so we also have to call it somewhere. And right now it's not being called if we run it and we try to move, our player's not moving. So what we want to do is then just put the movement function in the physics process. All right. Uh, and now, again, I can move, uh, just like I was able to before, and you can see our gun stays with us. Now, in order to get our gun to aim, the way I'm going to do it is to get our gun, and this is probably the simplest way to aim, uh, is to get our gun to look at our mouse, um, wherever our mouse or cursor position is, right? And there's actually something, there's a really, really easy way to do that. Um, because there's a function in Godot called look at. Um, so if you literally type in look at, what essentially what this does is it just makes whatever object you're calling it on, uh, it takes it and adjusts its rotation to point towards whatever you put inside these parentheses. We need a uh, argument. Uh, and then Godot also has a global function called get global mouse position. And it's that easy. There's no need to really understand how uh, either of these work that much other than that ro look at is rotating us to face whatever we put in these. Get global mouse position is a, a, a function built into Godot that just basically tells where our cursor is on the screen and gives us, it returns a vector two. Uh, right, so it returns a vector two type with that uh, in 2D coordinates. Now, if we do this, we're not going to be rotating the gun. We're going to be rotating, do I not have WASD? That's weird. Uh, we're not going to be rotating the gun, but instead we're going to be rotating ourselves. Well, I guess we are also rotating the gun, but what I would like to do is keep us uh, unrotated and just rotate the gun. So here I'm going to go ahead and say uh, gun dot. Okay. And so what this does, essentially this is the format for accessing uh, anything about that is that we can say gun or whatever the, um, you know, uh, object is dot like period. Uh, and then what this does is it gives us access to all of the things that it can do. So for instance, that's a sprite, right? So what I'll do is just delete this right now and we can say gun dot um, 
texture, uh, and we can uh, we can just grab access to the texture property, just like on us because we have the texture property on main character. Gun has a texture property right here, uh, and so on and so forth for scale and stuff like that. Remember, we moved position, so we can say gun dot uh, position here and get access to those properties. And now we're accessing the position property of this node rather than our own position property. Um, and so here, what I'm doing right here is I'm calling the look at function on the uh, gun node rather than on ourselves. So that is why that happens. Uh, and then I can go ahead and run this. Uh, and now you'll see that uh, the gun looks at my mouse just like that. And um, yeah, that's us making our gun and going over how to control other nodes uh, that are in your scene tree. So that's going to be just about it for today. In the next episode, we'll go on actually making our bullet and potentially spawning it. We'll see how long that takes. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.